Brian Jaleski with Able Distributors. Today we're talking about the NTI TFTN and install tips. So I'm not gonna go over every single thing that's in the manual. NTI puts together a really, really good manual. It's 149 pages. It would be a four hour video. You don't wanna sit in front of me for four hours. I don't wanna do it for four hours. So some of the things I'm gonna cover, what's in the box so you can kind of plan what they give you, what you need to bring with you. Hanging a boiler, which is pretty important. It's a wall hung boiler. Piping, venting, the drain, and wiring. Again, I'm not going to go through every single detail. This is just going to kind of be an overview, things I think that you should know on the TFTN boilers. Let's get started. Let's see what's in the box. Today, I've unpackaged a TFTN. This happens to be 110,000 BTU. And I wanted to show you what it comes with so you're prepared for your install. The most important thing to me is it comes with about five and a half inches of CPVC. You're gonna put this on your exhaust side and start your venting that way. Yes, it seems silly to put just this much and then coat of PVC, but we know that the hottest part of this whole venting system is right off the boiler. So this kind of gives you a little bit of a cushion. CPVC can handle a lot more temperature than normal PVC can, so it's a good thing to have. Next in the box, they give you a nice elbow with a fitting on top and that that opening on top is actually for a little air separator so you can take this off the supply side on the top and then off that elbow they give you a nice little uh, bushing reducer so you can see how that's coming together and then in the box they give you a pressure relief valve that can thread right in. So they've got that all figured out for you, which is nice. Next up, they've got a nice brass cap for whichever port you don't use, you're gonna cap off. So they include that in there. They include the kit to change the boiler to LP. So if you need LP, that kit's in there also. They've got, of course, the hanging bracket, screw this to the wall. You hang the boiler on the wall. Of course, that's included. They've got screens for your intake and exhaust, half inch mesh screens that you can push into your last uh, elbow or 45. They've got a temperature pressure gauge that you'll have to come up with some place to put this in. So you're gonna put a T someplace on the supply side and screw that into place so you can see your temperature and your pressure. It comes with the outdoor temperature reset sensor. It's always a good idea to use outdoor reset and put the sensor outside someplace. So it comes with that. This little bracket, and a lot of people don't use this and they really should. When you hang the boiler on the wall, it's just gravity that has it hanging on these hooks. God forbid somebody actually went up and, and gave it a little lift and pull, they could pull it off of that bracket. So this goes on the bottom, mounts to the wall, mounts to the boiler to stop it from coming out and up. Make sure it stays on the bracket forever and ever and ever. And then they give you a couple lag bolts and mollies to help hang it. On the other end, we've got what nobody's ever seen in the history of man, the instruction manual. In here is a section of drain hose that comes off the condensate drain for this, the condensate trap. And in here is obviously the very complete instruction guide. Every single thing from troubleshooting to piping diagrams to laying it out to, to programming it. We're gonna get into all that in a little bit here, but that's what comes in the box of your new NTI TFTN boiler. Okay, we've gone through what's in the box so you know what comes with the boiler. Let's go right to hanging the boiler. And the reason I'm putting an emphasis on this is because of the weight of this thing and you're gonna hang it on the wall. The 85 through the 110 with water in it, 107 pounds. The 150, 122, the 199, 140 pounds. So it's starting to get a little heavier. You can see why the importance of having a sturdy background for that bracket to mount to. The 285 is 180 pounds. The 399 and 340 is 250 pounds. That's a lot of weight. 
So when you're hanging these things, make sure that you've got a solid uh, surface to mount the, the bracket to, and then use that bottom bracket that A, stops it from being pulled off, bumped off or anything else, and it'll help take a little weight. Recommended clearances. So there's minimum recommended, and then there's what you should have. So on the top, the minimum is 12 inches. You're gonna want more. If you can get 24 inches, I would absolutely get 24 inches. I would not ever go below 12. Side, the minimum is two inches. That's pretty darn tight. It's tight for hanging it, everything else. I would say if you leave 12 inches on the side, you'd be doing a lot better. The front, now I'm ex not exactly a thin person. The minimum is 18 inches in front. I'm trying to service this boiler, work on it, diagnose things, install it, everything else with only 18 inches in front. 36 is more uh, a comfortable range. The back, of course, is zero. As we go through, the gas connection on the 85 all the way up to the 399 is three quarter inch, so you need to know that. Water connections, the 85 through the 285 is inch and a quarter, supply and return. The 340 through the 399 is inch and a half, supply and return. Venting, now all the rules that we always know about venting still apply here. In the manual, there's probably four or five pages that only talk about venting, including 20 feet max outside piping. So if it's an unconditioned area, they don't want more than 20 feet, including your elbows. So the 85 through the 150, the manual says two or three inches. Now, obviously, if it's a short run and it's a 150, you can do it. If it's a little bit longer, you're gonna go right to three. The 85, you can go a longer run on two inch, or you can go right to three, either way. Always remember to use that start piece, that little piece of CPVC to take away the heat that's generated inside that boiler before you go to PVC. That's important. The 199 through the 285 is guaranteed three inch, no two inch allowed. The 340 through the 399 is four inch. Now all of these, they can just take combustion air or intake air from the room. Make sure the room is big enough, make sure there's plenty of of air for that, but you can absolutely do it. So now you've got the weight and why hanging it on something sturdy is important. Clearance to make sure you can work on this in the future. Your gas connections, your water connections, venting. Make sure you use that start. Let's get on to the next part. Alrighty, so the TFTN does not have a built-in boiler pump. So you're gonna have to add a boiler pump and when we're talking about a boiler pump, very rarely do we want you to take the boiler, go right to the system pump, and then come back to the boiler. What happens is if you're not moving enough water, the boiler starts running into problems. It doesn't have enough flow to keep the boiler happy. So what we want you to do is to go primary, secondary. What primary, secondary is the boiler has a short little loop and it'll stay plenty happy. And the secondary has a pump that pumps out to the field. That way, if everything's lined up perfect, you get perfect flow, but at least we make sure that the boiler has more than enough flow. There's a couple ways to do it. Closely spaced T's, now that's in the manual too. It's you come down in the T's, the distance between the center to center of those T's is four times the pipe diameter. So on the inch and a quarter pipe, it's gonna be five inches. So those T's gotta be five inches apart, faced like that. Supplies and return come in like that. The other option is to use a hydro sep. And the beauty about a hydro sep is it does more than just the closely spaced T's. So this would be the supply out to the field, return back to the boiler. You'd have a pump over here and the boiler would be plenty happy. Over here, supply out to the field, return back from your system. Again, a pump over here. So the way I would use this is I would have a pump on my return, push into the boiler, out the supply, keep the supply on top. You've got an air separator. You've got a spot here for a gauge, pressure and temperature. You've got a mag strainer on the return side. So this keeps everything nice and happy. You've got a drain on the side. That's what we're talking about with primary secondary. And what these boilers need is a certain flow to keep that boiler working happy. The 85 through the 110, a UPS 1558 is perfect for the boiler pump. On the 150 through the 340, it wants you to go to a 2699. And again, I'm sizing these off a 20 degree de Delta T. 
The 399 wants a 26150. So again, you can't just put a 1558 on all of these and think it's gonna work well. Primary secondary is definitely the way to go with this boiler. Wiring, now this boiler, again, it, I'm not gonna go through the entire manual because it's a long manual, but it's got a setup wizard that kind of helps you set up each and every zone. The boiler's on a cord, which makes it super easy. It's got an outlet on the side built in and wired hot so that if you needed a, a condensate pump or anything else, you have an outlet there. So you can do three zones, three thermostats. And this boiler is a little different than most because it's got R, W, and C. So now you have the capability of sending common up to the thermostat and actually having a powered thermostat or a Wi-Fi thermostat. So that really is kind of nice. Three pumps or three zone valves. So in there, you're gonna see you've got a spot for three pumps, three valves, and you just have to choose which way you're going, 24 volts or 110. You can't intermix. It's gonna to have to be three pumps or three zones. There is a spot for the boiler pump to wire in. So no matter what is happening, any zone calls, the boiler pump's sure to run. There's a spot for outdoor reset. So if you haven't used outdoor reset before, basically all it does is measure outdoor temperature and say, okay, it's a 55 degree day. We know we still need heat, but if, especially if it's a radiant floor or anything like that, we might not have to ramp all the way up. We could probably heat the space with less energy and less temperature and not overshoot the thermostat if we didn't fire all the way up. So it comes with an outdoor reset. It also comes where you've got auxiliaries if you want, uh, indirect tank for domestic hot water. You've got bus terminals if you want to link two or more of these together. All that's in the manual. And again, my videos are not here to replace the manual. That manual, somebody took a lot of time to put together. It's, and NTI does a really, really good job. I know we've all seen manuals and you look through it, it has nothing useful in it. That's not the way NTI is. Their manuals are actually really, really good. So there you go. Always primary, secondary, keeps the boiler happy. You can do it with close tees or a hydro sup. It tells you what size boiler pump and the chart is in the manual. Wiring, again, everything in my videos is in the manual. That's the NTI TFTN boiler. Thank you.